All right, let's talk about the Holy Grail, automated money. You know, everybody since the beginning of time been looking for two things. They've been looking for the fountain of youth and a way to automate income so, you know, money's on trees. And a lot have been writ has been written on that. You see books about it. I'm gonna tell you right now what my two cents uh, is about that subject of how you can automate your income. I mean, the first question is, can you really do it? And so uh, there's about 10, things that I've written out because this is one of the most common questions that I get. Let me give you a few of them right now. So the first one, if we're talking about automation. So that, you know, this is the dream, like you wake up and there's more money in your bank account than there was the night before. You didn't really do anything. You know, you set up a system and it's just rocking and rolling. So can you do that? Um, anytime I want something in life, I always use a principle uh, of logic called an inversion. So Charlie Munger, the self-made billionaire, him and Warren Buffett made a $300 billion company and, Warren and Charlie Munger says it's because he understands inversion. So to get what you want, you have to think about what you don't want. So what are the things that keep people from getting automated income? Because I would say uh, about out of, the, out of the business that I've started, invested in, I'm a, I'm a mentor, or I'm a, you know, an advisor to, only about 1% of them would qualify for this principle of automated income. For example, uh, I know a guy, just an acquaintance, I don't, I don't really know him too well, but he invested in a company, got in real early, and he owns like 1% or 2% of the company, and he gets a dividend check, okay? and he moved to Mexico or something. I forget where he is in South America. He's an American guy and he just literally just gets a check and he makes about, I think the check is about 10 million bucks a year. Okay, he got in order. So it's not very common. Most of us, me and you, wherever you are financially, we've been through periods where you're grinding it out to make money. So automation is the opposite, obviously, of grinding out. Now, here's what I think about it. Number one, there is a myth that it's all about the idea. So I kind of classify people that I meet uh, by the myth that they bought into. I do this on myself. I'm like, Ty, what myth have you bought into today? The idea myth, <laughs> I'd say about 90% of the world is into that. And I see that as an investor. People come to me and they go, Ty, I got the idea. I got the idea. I got the idea. So what happens is people wait forever for their magical idea. So they think it's gonna be something that, you know, they're gonna wake up one morning and go, boom, that's the business. Ooh, the next Snapchat. It doesn't work like that. If you look at the 1% of people who figure out how to automate their income, it's all over. In fact, that guy that I told you that makes millions and lives in South America, he invested in some um, trash companies, <laughs> believe it or not, like waste type companies in the United States. And he got in early, and so that's not a business that you would traditionally, idea-wise, think would bring you the holy grail of the goose that lays the golden egg. So the idea, if you buy into the idea myth, I'm gonna tell you what I can predict about you. 20 years from now, 10 years from now, 30 years from now, if I met you, you'd be like, I'm almost onto it. I'm just waiting. Like I'm, uh, you know, you meet those people. Don't be an idea myth person. It's much more, automation is much more about two things. It's about structuring and force of will. So here's what I mean by this. Structuring basically means, pardon, I have bad handwriting. By the way, you like this shirt? Somebody made it for me. Uh, <laughs> it's got my name on it. They mailed it to me. Thought it was a cool idea. Anyway. Structuring. So what I mean is, it's not per se a specific industry. It's not. I was just reading the book about Paul Allen. He co-founded Microsoft with Bill Gates. It's not like only computer people get rich. So you have to have a computer type idea. It's not like only people in Wall Street are the ones. It, it, you can structure almost any industry well so that it has some level of automated income or you can structure it poorly. So you don't have to wait forever. You should use all that brain power instead of the magical idea on thinking on structuring. And there's a lot I can talk about that. I'm, a, I'm trying to keep these videos relatively short because people are busy, I know you're busy. And then the second thing, force of will. You give me one person with an amazing idea with no persistence and tenacity, they're never gonna create an automated income. You give me another person who has a so-so idea, but they're willing to push you know, it takes, like the old saying goes, you know, 
To get what you want, you have to deserve what you want. You have to grind at some level. So even if you want automated income, there is a point, uh, inflection point when it starts. At before then, you have to put it into work. So uh, the number two thing, the, the myth that keeps people from getting automated income. So this the idea myth, it's the hard worker myth. If you look at comments I get sometimes, I get people saying stuff like, Ty, you know, there's only one way that you, none of this stuff, you don't need to read books, you don't need mentors, which is absolute BS, trust me. I was just on the phone today interviewing Ryan Holiday. He's one of the top, mark. he was the head of marketing for American Apparel, right? Build a billion dollar brand with them. And we were talking about this and it's like, it, it's not just <laughs> that you put your head down and you work harder than everybody else. Because if that was true, next time you go to a restaurant, who do you think is working the hardest at that restaurant? Do you think it's the waitress? Do you think it's the cooks? Do you think it's the busboy? Or do you think it's the owner? Now, I don't know uh, who works harder, waitress or busboys or kitchen staff, but they work a lot harder than the owner. So the owner makes more despite the fact that in terms of pure physical exertion. So if your plan is just to work your way, you're going to work your way into the ground. There is definitely, not to be cliche, there is definitely something uh, to the thought of um, smart work. You know, it's like people, I see people and I actually feel bad. You know, I get three to 5,000 people email me or contact me on Instagram, Facebook, whatever, a day. Right, so I get all these people pouring out like, dude, I'm trying this, and I see like 50% of people, their thing is like, I'm just gonna work a little harder. Like, I need to structure my day. If I just woke up at four in the morning, I'd get more done. Well, uh, you know that Pareto principle you've heard of before called the 80-20 rule? Without a doubt, 20% of the work you put in in life gets you 80% of the money. It's, that's been proven, Pareto was an Italian economist, it's been proven over and over to be true. So. You can't just out hustle because if that was true, we'd live in a world where you know people doing construction were making more than people who are in glass offices. All right, number three, the third myth, and I think a key, you gotta ask yourself, if you wanna automate income, are you a wanter or a wisher? These are the three types of people that I never see people uh, automating income. And I've been able to automate income in different businesses. And when you get it right, it's insane. And that's why I said there's about 10 things that I've done. These first three are the things I've avoided. They're like the landmines. Then there's some other things like the front loading effect, power scaling, all these other things that you do. I don't know if I have time to get to those right now, but I'm actually gonna do, uh, I'm, people are asking me to do these online talks. So I'm gonna do a free online talk. If you wanna know, the complete what I call million dollar blueprint that I teach when I buy a company and I retrain and rehire you know new people to manage the company this is what I teach them I this million dollar blueprint it's about 10 principles so there should be a button below me or above click it it'll give you it'll take you to my website it's absolutely free you can register by the way don't don't wait too long some people do it to the very end and uh, the last one, I, the last two I've done have literally crashed the server. So many people are, because they're free, right? So tens of thousands of people try to get in. So I'm limiting how many people that I let in so I don't blow up my servers. I'm actually having my coders recode the comment code so it doesn't crash everything. So if you, if you think this will be uh, helpful to you and you wanna learn, you wanna shave 10 years off this million dollar blueprint uh, learning curve, uh, go ahead and click the link wherever they are. You just you just sign up. It's no obligation, or you don't have to pay or anything. And uh, it'll tell you what time. It'll will translate it. Uh, will uh, convert it to your time zone, so you know exactly what time to show up. And then you can just watch it on your phone or your computer, or whatever. But let me give you the third one right now. So wanters and wishers. This it, the sad news is you. Can, some people are all three, which is a real disaster. This is the most common. Um, Jim Rohn is a famous life coach. He, he died, tra it's sad, he's a genius guy. You can find him old YouTube videos back like 70s and 80s. He's the guy who trained Tony Robbins. Um, and so one thing, the analogy that Jim Rohn said, he said, the world doesn't respond to need, it responds to seed. The world doesn't respond to need, it responds to seed. The way I think of that, I lived on a farm for 10 years. It's like if you're a farmer in the, in October, 
and you're hungry and you're standing in a field and there's no corn and there's no tomatoes and there's no apples, you can't just yell at the earth and go, I'm hungry. The earth doesn't respond to that. The only thing the earth does is respond to the seeds that you planted six months earlier in April. You can't be eating in October if you didn't plant. And no matter how much you cry, no matter how much you want, no matter how much you wish, and we live in a world, there's lots of different theories on what it takes to make money. There's you know, the secret, and I believe in some of that. There's the power of positive thinking, and Norman Vincent Peale, and all these books. You guys know I love books. you know. And, but um, without a doubt, the people who create automated income are people who are masters of planting seeds ahead of time. And, 2,000 years ago, um, there, uh, I think it was Lao Tzu, a philosopher, said, um, prepare for what is difficult uh, ahead of time. I'm butchering the quote, I'll remember in a second. Uh, oh yeah, do what is difficult. Do what is difficult when it is easy. Do what is difficult when it's easy. And so the farmer who plants when he's not hungry, it's easy to plant then. And most people, and I hope this isn't you because this was me at one point, my plan to make more money was to like wish. I would sit there and go, what if I won the lottery? And like, and then, I, and then it, what happens is a negative spiral because it starts leading you into anger. So you start getting mad about things you can't control. You start going, but the government, but my parents didn't, but my school. But the point is, that's over. Stephen Hawking, one of the leading physicists of all time, he says, he used to think, that time would reverse at some point in the history of our universe. That the universe would contract and time would go back. You could go back in time. You would be like Benjamin Button, old, and then you'd get younger. But he says he made a mistake 20 years later, 30 years later. He said, the arrow of time always moves forward thermodynamically, psychologically, and uh, cosmologically. And so what that means for you and I in practical terms is that when you want and wish, you're focusing on things that according to the law of physics, cannot be altered. So wanters and wishers are always misplacing their energy. And so I'm telling you this, you know, greatness is cool under pressure. If you're completely broke now or you've made some money but you're plateaued, you're not going to want and wish your way out of this. It's good to be optimistic at some level, enough to give you hope, but that has nothing to do with people who make big money. Mark my words. I've been broke and I've made money before. And I will tell you, it wasn't because I started going, hey, I deserve more. This is going to happen. There's nothing wrong with doing that in minor amounts, but what's better is planting seeds. And you must become, there's a, the, it, Silicon Valley talks about this accelerated cycle called the lean startup or the MVP, the minimum viable product. Uh, product. And if you look at companies like LinkedIn, Twitter, for example, I just interviewed the guy who wrote the book, Hatching Twitter, which is the, the first real story of the founding of Twitter. People don't realize Twitter was started in two weeks. Two weeks. It went from idea to a beta version. And that beta version wasn't that good. It was like a text. It didn't you have hashtags. It didn't have usernames. But you know what? They had momentum. And the opposite, if you're a wanter and wisher, you must become a momentum creator because you know what the end result of the momentum, the two, the four Twitter guys, you got Jack Dorsey, you got Evan, uh, you got uh, Biz Stone and a guy named Noah. Those two main guys, Ev and um, Jack Dorsey, they're worth over $10 billion. They were worth billions early 30s. Why? Because they weren't wanting and wishing. They, you must create momentum where you are and you got to, uh, transpose all that mental energy that the vast majority of the masses of humans make. My favorite quote, you know, Thoreau, the mass of men lead lives of quiet desperation. What is called resignation is just confirmed desperation. So don't fall into these three. Now, there's seven other things. So these are what not to do. Uh, there's seven things you need to do. I need a little more time to go over that. So like I said, uh, I'm going to try to keep these relatively short. So there should be a link below. Click it. It's completely free for all you suspicious people. It's free, literally. Uh, there's no, you don't have to pay anything. Um, and if you're super suspicious, I always tell people that are super suspicious, don't even bother. <laughs> super suspicious people never get anywhere, by the way. Uh, it's okay to be you know, smart, but cynics lose. So at some level, 
you got to understand these three and these other seven. So I got this free talk. Uh, it's the same blueprint that I literally, when I call it a blueprint, I literally print this out. And if you're ever here in Hollywood and come into my company, you know, at any given time, I'll have 40, 50, 60 people in the office that I'm taking time to, to train on these same principles so they can go out uh, and run multi-million dollar companies that, that I buy or that I start. So uh, check it out, click the link below, might be above, um, and check out this million dollar blueprint. I promise you that these principles work for some of you. You only need to make an extra thousand bucks a month. For some of you, you know, you got high aspirations. You want to be the next Jack Dorsey or Bill Gates. You, this stuff works. It's scalable at all levels, no matter where you are. It works for guys, it works for girls. So it's good stuff. Remember, of all these, the most deadly of the three that I talked about is probably these two. The idea myth, the want or wisher. You don't need just an idea. You need a structure. I remember I was actually at the SLS Hotel in Beverly Hills. Uh, and when I was first really starting to make some money and uh, I sat down with these guys that were big money guys These guys had made you know hundred million bucks and I had a lunch with them It was at a conference and one of the guys looked at me and he said Ty It's all about your structure and I didn't know I remember thinking what's this dude talking about is he just making this up? And now I realize at the end of the day structures win So I'll be talking about that plus you know these seven other things um, Check it out click the link and uh, by the way, on that you can ask, there's live chat, so you can ask questions and get responses in, in real time while you listen in. So click the link, it'll show you the time, and uh, yeah, talk to you soon.